What is the Internet of Things? Today, your computer and phone are connected to the Internet, but soon our whole world will be. From our cars, to our homes, to entire cities. Industries like healthcare, energy, and manufacturing will be transformed. But how big is the opportunity? Well, think about the internet in 1994 for a moment. It had already existed for 25 years. Then bang, the World Wide Web was created and an explosion of companies like Amazon, eBay, and Google transformed our lives in ways never before imagined just years earlier. It was technology's big bang moment, but not its last. Moving the internet off our phones and PCs and into the world around us will soon redefine our lives in ways never imagined. The internet of things will be technology's next big bang. But don't take our word for it. The world's great technology companies are all rushing into the land grab because they know what's at stake. Part of the problem around the internet of things is that the trend has so much power to change technology. Like the internet in 1993, it's difficult to describe and there's still so much to be invented in these early stages. So we want to make the internet of things real. We want to visit companies on the bleeding edge, inventing the future. In the dead of winter, we flew to a place many would call crazy. We flew the Arctic Circle, and we visited a company powering some of the devices we wear. Its Air Nav Things category saw 1,425% sales growth in the past year, oh, and expects another 300% growth in 2014. We also visited a city that's being built from the ground up as a smart city, a place where technology two to three years ahead of what we have in America is just the everyday norm. Along our journey, we'll travel 9,000 miles canvassing the Nordic region for innovation where you least expect it. It's a magical land where reindeer roam, the northern lights run wild, and, well, the sled dogs really earn their keep. So join us as we take a tour across the world to see why the Internet of Things is set to transform our world. We begin our journey in Norway at a small company you've likely never heard of. It's called Nordic Semiconductor. Nordic's main offices are in Trondheim, a city sitting just 216 miles below the Arctic Circle. Its specialty is ultra-low power chips for wireless technology. We believe that this market of ultra-low power wireless solutions is about to take off in the coming years. As we start seeing embedded wireless solutions built into a whole new range of products, which is known throughout the industry as the Internet of Things. And you've likely seen the buzz around wearables in the past year. Fitness devices like Nike Fuel Band, Fitbit, or Jawbone are exploding in popularity. Then there are concepts like Google Glass, and of course you've heard the rumors of Apple's interest in building its own smartwatch. One hugely important aspect for all of these devices is battery life. You don't want a fitness tracker or a watch that you have to charge every six hours. Nordic has helped solve this problem. It's created a way to connect and share information between devices and your phone that's so low power some devices could conceivably run for years on a single charge. Nordic has been a pioneer in a technology called Bluetooth Low Energy. It's rapidly become the standard for millions of devices that connect to our phones. It's an early standard for the Internet of Things. And if you're a leader in standards that enable huge technology trends, well, there can be a lot of money in that. Just this last quarter, Bluetooth Smart was now 28% of our revenue, and it's rapidly growing. It'll be well over 30% of our revenue next quarter. A year ago, it was 2% of our revenue. This just goes to show how quickly this market is taking off. Up until 2012, Nordic was making no money off its Bluetooth LE products. Yet the company believes so strongly in the ability of Bluetooth LE to be a central technology in the Internet of Things that it still kept investing in the technology. So I think we are in an extreme early phase. I mean, we are just seeing the first uh, product, commercial products coming out. 
and we haven't seen the killer application yet. Today, sales of Nordic's Bluetooth LE chips grew 1,425% over the previous year. Though still just 27% of total company revenue, Nordic is now devoting 80% of their employees to work on Bluetooth LE. Wearables are fascinating. Ten years ago, a computer sat on our desk. Five years ago, a smartphone came around and sat on our hand. Now, there's something we actually wear. However, I want to stress, we're just in the beginning when it comes to wearable devices. What you're seeing today in fitness is going to lead to a whole explosion of similar, similar devices but that are going to be used in medical technology for uh, monitoring a whole growing uh, population of elderly people, growing population of people with chronic illnesses, that they can simply monitor common ailments like high blood pressure, glucose levels, abnormal heartbeats, through the use of a, wire, a small wireless chip which is uh, connected to their body, providing early warnings if they have an abnormality in their condition through their smartphone, and sending that information to the cloud where they can be monitored by their healthcare professional. Yet while wearables by themselves are a tremendously fascinating technology, when it comes to the Internet of Things, they're just one small piece of a much larger storyline. The next step on our journey brought us even farther north, this time to northern Finland. No, your eyes don't fool you. This is a reindeer eating from my hand right now. That's because I'm 15 miles above the Arctic Circle. Because we've traveled to the ends of the Earth to find one of the most unexpected places that is producing the next generation of technology. We make uh, first about 25,000 cubic meters artificial snow. So it's a huge lot of snow. Then we take the molds and we put the snow on the molds, pack it, and then we wait for a while. Then we take the mold away and we, sh we hope that it will stay there. <laughs> Always it stays there. Vili Haviko runs the Arctic Snow Hotel near Rovaniemi, Finland. The hotel will melt in the summer and is rebuilt every single year. For as little as 125 euro per night, you can stay in a sub-freezing room, warm and snug inside your reindeer skin bedding. We passed on the room, but note Vile's use of sensors in the lights and temperature gauges. Now that's a simple example of the Internet of Things, and if that's all this technology had to offer, it wouldn't be worth our trip. But to the south of Rovaniemi lies one of the most connected and advanced cities in the world. You might not recognize it, but this very spot I'm standing in right now is the center of the World Air Guitar Championships. But beyond Air Guitar, downtown Oulu is very notable because of public-private partnerships that enable new kinds of technology. What kinds of new technology am I talking about? Well, a citywide Wi-Fi network that has been in existence for over a decade with over 1,500 Wi-Fi stations. It includes not just Wi-Fi from the city, but also collaboration with private enterprises such as restaurants. And then we could also look at something like an Ubi screen. They are interactive screens which not just give information on the city, but also allow things like games for kids to be able to coordinate or also events like movies. And finally, Bluetooth monitors across street lights to be able to monitor foot traffic. As people's signals come through, they can actually see where people are congregating and moving so that they could direct their own walk signals and other areas. Olu is built on a think-different attitude and technology. A few weeks before our arrival, the city held a contest where aspiring startups could jump into freezing Arctic waters to pitch their companies in return for potential funding. There's only one rule. They can pitch as long as they want. As long Ooh, as they're in the water. Oh. There is no delay, no risks. It's all immediately available for you. To get a better sense of life in Olu, we met with a family and followed them through their morning routine. Okay. Now, when you start the application, it actually calibrates itself um, with, the, with the cap here. Okay. Yeah. We stopped by the Navala family home, where they showed us a pilot program from the Olu Center for Health to bring medical technology into the home. It's one of several public-private partnerships we'll see throughout our trip. This particular device checks kids' ears for infections and sends the results out to a cloud-based management system. At $150, if the device saves one unnecessary trip to the hospital, it has paid for itself. In the case medical care is needed, 
doctors immediately have a health record of the patient, which gives them better data and saves time. About 800 families are currently in the program across Olu. It's just the tip of the iceberg on how the Internet of Things can change healthcare in coming years. McKenzie estimates the Internet of Things could have up to two trillion of economic impact on healthcare by 2025. Our next stop with the Nivalas was the family's preschool, where the Internet of Things is tackling a problem as simple as taking attendance. Bringing in the children in the morning, it's sort of like uh, just double touch and so NFC compatible phone with, uh, with DESI software in it. And it's, it's logging in the children and it's sending the real-time information to a DESI backend system. So all the in mobile phones at the daycare center, each, each group has um, one, one mobile phone and they have uh, real-time information of the situation within the whole daycare center. Parents no longer need to call schools. They can sign in online if their child is sick. In the case of emergency, the school has real-time information on all its students. Permission for field trips no longer require a signature or a check. When parents are checking their kids in, they're automatically prompted to approve upcoming trips and payments, which are handled electronically. It's a win-win arrangement, and the city sees cost savings as efficiency improves. For example, because management knows how many students are at each school in real time, it can better manage staffing levels. The local company that's developing the software powering the system gets to try its products out in a real-life environment. We also stopped by the University of Olu, which is a driving force behind these public-private partnerships. Mika Rantakakko from Center for Internet Excellence, which is a research and innovation unit developing new generation internet activities with special focus on uh, 3D and interactive internet. At the university, we met with a host of startups all pioneering the 3D internet. It might sound like an odd idea, but just weeks after we visited, Facebook bought the company which makes the glasses I'm wearing in the scene to explore the virtual worlds the University of Olu and these startups are building. The total purchase price? $2 billion. Mark Zuckerberg believes these 3D worlds can be the future of how we interact online. We'll check in on a company combining the 3D internet with the Internet of Things in an unbelievable way in just a minute. But first... Hey fools, I'm here at Electrobit. You might not have heard of it because it trades on the Helsinki Stock Exchange, but if you're lucky enough to have been invested in it, it's one of the best performing stocks across the past year. And we're looking at a technology space that many investors might not often think about, which is how to apply kind of cutting edge technology in the wireless space to something like the military. Could you describe the product you're holding right now and uh, the market it's aiming for? Uh, yes, uh, this is a biometric tablet having a 7-inch display and uh, running Android operating system. Uh, for biometric uh, measurements, uh, it has two uh, high-quality fingerprint sensors here, and then it has an uh, iris uh, recognition scanner here. And, and with these uh, biometric sensors, there's uh, good accuracy to collect biometric data and then also recognize uh, persons. Security is of the utmost importance because that tablet could stand at the center of the internet of the battlefield. Imagine a commander glancing down at his tablet with the exact position of his troops on a map in real time. Such advances could have a revolutionary impact on the safety of troops in chaotic war zones. The company dabbles in several Air Nav Things areas. They create the systems powering new connected cars. They've also created wearables including this fitness monitor from Adidas. The idea that our cities and everything in our homes are connected might sound like magic, but it's far from it. In fact, to find companies behind this trend, we've come all the way to Technology Road. You might not be able to read the sign because it's in Finnish. We just met with an Internet of Things company at the very core of this new technology revolution. 
It's a company that's built systems for being able to monitor everything in bridges in China to a windmill just 20 miles down this road. And who knows, next year could even be powering the technology, making the building you're currently sitting in smarter. Hello, my name is Jarkko Vatjusanttila. I'm working as a chief technology officer at CyberLightning. Uh, we are working in the field of Internet of Things, mainly focusing on smart cities, which are growing smarter every day. And there's a huge amount of information to be managed, huge amount of information to be visualized, and we are creating the clever tools for managing both of those on a mobile device. Smart cities are an estimated $1.5 trillion market by 2020. So Cyber Lightning has chosen an attractive niche. With millions of sensors monitoring everything from streetlights to utilities to optimizing garbage collection routes, Cyber Lightning is building tools to visualize the location of all these sensors in 3D models of cities. We've all been there before on a trip and you're wondering if you left your lights on. It's an age-old problem, but something the Internet of Things might be close to fixing. I'm joined here with a demo where you can actually display something as simple as a fan and in 3D turn it off remotely. Could you show us uh, how this works? So, uh, I have my iPad in here and uh, just clicking the room in here. Okay, now it's off. Now I turn it on from here. So this is how the 3D Internet of Things works. You can have the visualization and, and really know what's happening where inside your home. A few moments ago, we showed you an example where a fan can be turned off, but that's just the most basic application of what we're looking at. So actually what we have here is your 3D model of a real life wind farm just 20 miles away, and you're gonna show us how you could control that in a virtual world. Yes, exactly. So take a look at this, this view. This is a view from our 3D map service. And the place really is located 20 miles from Oulu, roughly. And there's a windmill farm you can see in the virtual space as well. This interface can be used for monitoring the data retrievable from the windmills, but you can also control them, for example, turning them on and off based on the utility requirements. But all kinds of other information could be embedded here. For, for example, a maintenance schedule or auto-diagnostics of the hardware. While Finland is on a peninsula, what might surprise you is there are thousands of islands off its coast. We're right next to the windmills that you saw in that 3D representation, but more specifically, this is a ferry, which is now closed down for the winter. In its place, cars are literally driving across the sea to get to the hundreds of islands in and around the Oulu area. Which makes you think, if the Internet of Things can control and monitor windmills in a remote area like this, where can't it change our everyday lives? Along our journey, we've seen everything from wearables, to ice hotels, to smart cities, to 3D software managing those cities. We've seen just a thin slice of the Internet of Things, but enough to see the huge potential from the trend. Think back to the creation of the web itself once again. It's obvious in hindsight, but while we talked about internet companies like eBay, Google, or Amazon, every company became an internet company to some extent. All large businesses built their own data centers, designed their own web pages, and eventually moved their marketing online. No company isn't touched by the internet. Yet, the Internet of Things takes this to another level entirely creating its own revolution. What other companies are hoping to make their name in this revolution? Arm Holdings is already the main beneficiary of the smartphone boom. Arm creates the IP that goes in the coming wave of billions of sensors and other connected devices. We also have Sierra Wireless, which is a leader in wireless machine-to-machine -machine devices. A big part of the internet of things is machines collecting information and sending that information back to applications that can make more meaningful decisions from it. Then there's also Invensense, a market leader in motion tracking chips that are not only heavily used in wearable devices and smartphones, but are also set to play a major part in future Internet of Things sensor networks. Splunk is a big data company. One of the greatest challenges in enabling an Internet of Things world is making actual insights on all the data to be collected. Splunk's data analysis systems were built from the ground up to handle massive amounts of machine-created data. 
leaving it ideally positioned for the takeoff of the Internet of Things. And finally, we have LogMeIn. The company's Zively subsidiary has created a public cloud for managing Internet of Things products. While it may not be the Amazon Web Services for the Internet of Things anytime soon, products like Zively provide an easier management system for companies moving more connected devices online. Of course, many more companies will be moving into the Internet of Things space in the years to come. We just showed you hospitals moving internet-connected medical equipment into people's homes, and utilities building 3D models to help manage wind farms powering a city. When you think of areas like healthcare or utilities, you normally don't think about cutting-edge technology, but that's about to change. We'll be watching that change and watching where the investing opportunity is.